for nutrition testing with Kali Linux. In this course, we'll be going from the grassroots level to much higher level of penetration testing and we'll be assuming that uh, you already know um, bits and bytes of penetration testing up to some level, let's say a beginner's level, but we'll cover as much as possible. So let's get started without wasting any time. All right, first of all, I'm in Kali Linux machine, as you can see in my screen. Let it get comfortable with Kali Linux, like uh, it's contain Kali Linux contain over 300 forensics and penetration testing tools, and finding your way around them can be a pretty much daunting task at times. So we'll show you some tips and tricks to find your way around this Kali Linux so that you can get up running it as quickly as possible. Um, you have lots of tutorials over YouTube, U Udemy, uh, like how to boot up Kali Linux and do the setup in VMware or Virtual Studio. So I will preferably not do a follow up on that. You can go to those videos and look it up. I will just start doing rendezvous with Kali Linux itself. All right. So first of all, there are number of Linux utilities that can be used. Uh, let's say if you have to locate a file in a Linux installation. Most of all, we have heard about, if you're not, uh, there are three most common being like number one is find, two is locate, and three is which. All three of these utilities all have similar function, but work and return data in different ways. Prior to using the locate utility, we must first use the update db command to build a local database of all the files on the system. So let's do this. Let's open terminal. So before using locate command, we are going to use update db command, update db, and let's press enter. I've not got any errors, so yep, this command is working perfectly now after i have used the update db command to build the local database of all files on the file system once the database has been built locate can be used to easily query this database when looking for local files one thing you should keep in mind before running locate you should always update the local database using update db command so let's say there is a file name let's say sbd.exe which is located in windows binaries folder and somewhere else okay i just know the name of the file but i am not sure where to find it so i can use locate command locate sbd.exe and press enter oh yeah i got so it says uh, it's in user slash share slash window slash sbd.exe and one in backdoor slash sbd.exe all right let's see which command now the which command searches through the directives that are defined in the path environment variable for a given file name so if a match is found which returns the full path of the file so let's see which let's say sbd it says user slash bean slash fbd so it's giving us the path all right another command we have which is known as find command and is a kind of a more aggressive search tool than the other two we have looked locate and which find is able to recursively search any given path for various files so let me just clear up my screen all right so you can use find command like this find slash hyphen name and sbd and I'm putting a star in so star means anything which starts with sbd and its end can be anything so bring me all results which are starting um, prefix sbd so let's see wait for a couple of seconds oh yeah we just started getting results so if you can see we have sbd.md5 sums 
SBD dot list. Uh, it's fetching more. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds. Um, you can, you can uh, play around it. Let me just terminate for the time being. It will take, I think, a couple of seconds more. Just let's just not waste our time and let's jump in with some other. Okay, now that we have seen some basic tools for locating files on Kali Linux, let's move into inspecting how Kali services work and what is needed to manage them successfully. So managing Kali Linux services is like a, we know Kali Linux is a specialized Linux distribution aimed for security professionals. As such, it contains several non-standard features too. The default Kali installation ships with several services pre-installed such as SSH, HTTP, MySQL and so on. If left untouched, these services will load at boot time which will result in Kali Linux exposing several open ports by default. Something we want to avoid for security reasons, Kali deals with this issue by updating our settings to prevent network services from starting at boot time. Kali also contains a mechanism to both whitelist and blacklist various services. The following things that we are going to discuss uh, will discuss some of these services as well as how to operate and manage them. So we know the default password for Kali machine is 2. So if we have to change it, let's say if you are using Kali Linux in VMware image um, as we are doing right now, the default uh, root password is 2. To change the default weak password to something long, complex and let's say secure before starting any services such as SSH, the root password can be changed with the command PA double S sorry double S WD and press enter it's asking me to put up a new unix command so for the time being let me just put anything it's asking me to retype yes so password updated successfully all right the SSH services, that is the secure shell service, is most commonly used to remotely access a computer using a secure encrypted protocol. However, we will see later on the SSH protocol has some surprising and useful features beyond providing terminal access. The SSH service is a TCP based and listens by default on port 22. And to start SSS service in Kali, you just type the service SSH start and press enter. We can verify that the SSS services is running and listening on TCP port 22 by using netstat command and piping through the output into grep command to search the output for sshd so let's say netstat and uh, hyphen int p and let's pipe it to grep space sshd and press enter oh, I'm sorry this is saying oh sorry typo error remove it and press enter uh oh it's saying listen 2305 ssd and tp6 yes everything is working fine it's listening fine and if you see the port 22 it's listening on it so we're getting similar result your ssh has started all right like many users you will want to have SSS service start automatically at uh, boot time you need to enable it so to enable it we will be using let me just clear up update dash rc dot d ssh 
and the bullet. That's all. If you're getting no error, or if you're doing it for the first time, you will getting something using dependency based boot sequencing. Um, if there is no error, so from the next time when you will be able when you will be booting up your Kali machine, your SSL service will start automatically at the boot time itself. Next is a pretty important service that is HTTP service, and it comes handy during a penetration test either for hosting a site or providing a platform for downloading files to victim machine. The HTTP service is a TCP based and listens by default on port 80. And to start HTTP service in Kali, we type service Apache to space start and press enter. All right, now oh, it's so as we did with the SSS service, we can verify with the HTTP service is running and listening on TCP port 80 by using netstat and pypg grab. So let's say netstat netstat hyphen p let's pipe it to grab apache hope there are no typos this time alright it's working perfectly to have the HTTP service start at boot time much like with the SSS service you need to explicitly enable it with update rc.d so let's do it update hyphen rc dot d apache to enable and press enter all right it's up so most service in Kali Linux are operated in much the same way that the ssh and http daemons are managed through their service or in its script to get more granular control of the service you can use tools such as uh, rconf or this V RC con both designed to help simplify and manage the boot persistence of the services. All right, so this much I had in mind for the beginning, and we'll do in the coming session. We'll continue with much more great content. Hope you will like it, and see you in the next class.